Welcome back to Living Local. Squirrels are staples on many college campuses, backyards, and forests, but how much do we really know about these rodents? An upcoming webinar is diving deeper into the ecology and life of these amazing creatures. Joining us via Zoom today is Abigail Garfalo, Energy and Environmental Stewardship Educator. Abigail, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So how did you get interested in squirrels in the first place? Uh, so I'm an environmental educator by trade, but really um, when we all had to hunker down in March and April, my view of the outside world was my balcony. Mm -hmm. And so I um, got to know my new co-workers per se. Um, they were a family of squirrels outside this little maple tree outside my um, apartment. And I just was like observing them throughout the day and noticed a lot of things. And I started asking a lot more questions about them. Why? Was there so much leaf litter on the ground? Why did we, um, you know, why did they have so many like squirrels in the tree? Um, because there were about five or six of them and they all seemed to play around with each other. And um, I just wanted to know more. And I was like, why do we even have so many in our urban areas? Um, aren't they woodland creatures? And so um, I just started asking more questions and I wanted to share what I learned from my observations and my research with all of you um, across the state, so. I have had those same questions myself before. I've always been so intrigued by, they're just funny little creatures and they're so interesting. Now, first of all, Abigail, what are some common squirrels in our area that folks will typically see? Yeah, so we have um, the tree squirrels in particular, we have three species in the Cook County region. Um, one we don't see very often, it's very reclusive, it, it lives in really high quality habitat, um, so we won't see those in our backyards or anything, but that's the red squirrel. Um, but we, the one that you will most likely come in contact with is the gray squirrel, the eastern gray squirrel, and that's probably the one that is most ubiquitous. Um, it's got this like really pretty gray back, um, and uh, they tend to get really big in the fall, um, like you're seeing now. And then the other one is the fox squirrel. Um, that one we'll see more often in areas with uh, larger predators. So that could be like people who have larger dogs um, or more cats in a neighborhood, things like that. And we tend to see them more in areas where it's just le there's less people. Um, and so, um, but those gray squirrels and those fox squirrels, really, really common. Um, and those are the ones you're going to have contact with. Now, I've always wondered this, why are there so many squirrels here in our area? Oh, yes, there are so many to the point where um, some people just really are annoyed by them, <laughs> honestly. Um, so we actually introduced them. We, they are native to Illinois um, and the Illinois woodlands, but they were really prevalent in the, 19, like in the early 19th century, really prevalent just in woodlands. People only had them in as pets, things like that, and come town, like the turn of the 20th century, late 18th, or late 19th, excuse me, um, we were like, you know what, we want more nature in our urban areas. Um, and so we introduced them into our parks, into our local areas, and initially they were, it was a failed experiment. Um, they only succeeded because humans fed them, and then there was some concern about bird and squirrel interactions, and so they failed. <laughs> Um, but then we started introducing more natural areas into our um, urban landscapes. We um, didn't used to have so many beautiful parks. Trees weren't so ubiquitous in our urban landscapes, but now they are, um, which is really wonderful to see because we found that humans and like need nature. We need natural aspects in our landscapes. And so we introduced them. Um, and we, we put trees um, and, and nut-bearing trees, especially that the squirrels love. And then uh, park managers, city managers were like, you know what? We should have woodland creatures too. Um, and so we introduced squirrels into college campuses, into parks. And then they just adapted so well because we created an environment that was really suitable for them. We gave them the food they needed. Um, we gave them a little extra help because we liked them so much. So we, protect them from, we protected them from predators. Um, and they're also pretty good reproducers too. They, they have about two litters a year, um, about two to four pups per litter. And so they are pretty successful um, animals. And so with the help of humans, their adaptability, and we just created this really wonderful environment for them, they just took off. And now we're to the point where um, we actually kind of have to prevent squirrels in certain places as well. So, yeah. 
Well, that makes a lot more sense why we have so many. And right, I, I went to college at the University of Northern Iowa. I feel like on that campus, I was tripping over squirrels as I was walking to class because there were so many. So it's so funny to see, but now I know the reason behind that, all right? Now, some people yeah. have brown squirrels, some black, some gray. Why are different squirrels in different areas? Yeah, so the brown squirrels are the fox squirrels, um, and those just kind of depend, like I was mentioning, if we have um, a neighborhood where people tend to have larger dogs, um, maybe it's like a little smaller of a population, we're going to see those fox squirrels, and those are the brown ones. Now, the gray and the black squirrels, those are actually both eastern gray squirrels. They're just different color morphs is what we call them. Um, and so the black squirrels um, have a recessive gene um, that makes their fur black. Um, and essentially recessive, meaning that both parents have to carry the black fur gene in order for the offspring to have it. And so um, we, in areas um, where it is beneficial for a squirrel to have black uh, fur, for example, we'll see more of them. I grew up in Springfield, Illinois, um, and so I had never seen a black squirrel in my life. And then when I moved up here uh, a couple of years ago, I was... <laughs> walking around with my husband in the neighborhoods in uh, the northwest suburbs, and I would, like, take a picture of a black squirrel every time I saw it because I was like, whoa, like, black squirrels, this is insane. We need to take pictures of it. And my husband was like, "What? Is, you're so weird. Why, like, black squirrels are so common. Um, but in, honest, in, in reality, for him, they are because black squirrels are more common in urban areas, um, and it's for a really funny reason, actually. So... Um, the gray squirrel species, uh, gray blends in with blacktop with the, the asphalt of the, um, of, the, of the roads and things like that. And so if um, I'm a driver and I see a gray squirrel driver walking by, I'm less likely to see it. So I'm more likely to hit it. A black squirrel, however, is really apparent against that asphalt. And so you're less likely to hit a black squirrel than a gray squirrel. So it's actually um, advantageous for the squirrel to have black fur in an urban area as opposed to a rural area, which is really cool. So Yeah, that is so interesting. Abigail, before we wrap up, can you tell us when is the All About Squirrels webinar happening and how can folks participate? Yeah, so this, the webinar is happening on Thursday, December 10th, so this Thursday. Um, it's at 1 p.m. You can sign up online. Um, the link is go.illinois.edu slash allaboutsquirrels, um, or you can just Google everyday environment squirrels. I'm sure it'll just pop up. Um, now, it is filling up quickly, so um, if you're interested, go and sign up. However, um, if you don't get a chance to hop in, that's totally okay, because we always post these webinars, we record them, and we post them almost like less than two weeks later. Um, and so you can hop on YouTube and type in the University of Illinois Extension webpage um, to get to their YouTube site and um, look in the everyday environment, uh, what's it called, their, their little folder. Mm -hmm. So they're like playlists, that's what I'm thinking of. And so that's how you can see all of our everyday environment webinars. You can learn more about squirrels, coyotes, woodpeckers, greenhouse gases, whatever you want. So Fantastic. So much education you're offering. Thank you so much for joining us, Abigail. Thanks for having me. If you'd like some more information, you can reach Abigail via email right there. We'll also have that detail posted on ourquadcities.com.